Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 17 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series, season 6. I have made a pretty, if I do say so myself, nice logistics system going on here. Uh, so what did I do? I set up last uh, two episodes, basically use logistics pipes to connect my entire base. Pretty much all my chests here are hooked up. I've got it all hooked up to a nice ender chest here such that I can place any items inside an ender pouch and they'll automatically be dropped into this ender chest because they're linked and they will automatically get sorted through the logistics pipes network into my sorting system. Pretty cool, right? So if I had, for example, some stone bricks, and I went ahead and did that, we should see stone bricks entering into the pipe and making its way to the appropriate location. Pretty cool, huh? Uh, I also set it up so that we've got a nice little sorting system going on here and automatic stocking of charcoal. This uh, charcoal connection is hooked up over to my Steve's Carts tree farm so that uh, anytime we need charcoal to power our steam engines, we easily can. Pretty neat. Let's go check on that tree farm while we're at it, by the way. I did want to take a look over here and see how things are doing. Yeah, it looks like we're doing pretty good. Uh, not bad at all, really. A little bit low on apples, but everything else we're doing pretty well with. Cool. I'm very pleased with the way things are turning out thus far. The one thing I'm having trouble with at the moment, though, aside from creepers sneaking up on me, come here, you. I'm not going to stand for that, is food. So why don't I start working on this episode, getting myself some more food? Uh, you know what I like? Steak. Steak's pretty good. I could also use leather for some future plans. So why don't I build an automation system for getting rid of all these cows and turning them into steak and leather. And you know what? While I'm at it, maybe we'll do something with the sheep too. All right, guys, we'll be back in just a few minutes to get started with that. All right, guys, we're back. So here's one of the things I'd like to do. Uh, one of the cool features of logistics pipes is the ability to automatically craft stuff. And some of the things I'm about to be crafting, I'm going to craft a lot of, and I'm probably going to craft a lot of in the future. So why don't we automate it a little bit so that every time I need to make something like a stone gear, I don't have to go running around and crafting it all manually because that's boring. Let's make something fun and exciting to automate crafting. So there's two things we need to automate crafting with. Okay. First off, we're going to need the following item, a crafting logistics pipe. This is a pipe that tells the logistics system, hey, uh, the inventory adjacent to me can automatically craft stuff, and you put in X and you get out Y. For example, you can tell it, hey, if you put in one piece of wood, you're going to get out four oak wood planks. Sounds pretty simple, right? It is. And, and the block we're going to be pumping it into is the logistics crafting table. Now we can pump into any block, to be honest with you. Um, some machines even can be pumped into directly, like uh, those machines over there. Uh, you don't have to pump into a crafting table, but you have to know what's going to go in and what's going to come out. So let's take a look at how things will work. All right, let's go ahead and do um, the basic crafting, which is the logistics crafting table. For this, we're going to need some crafting tables and some chests, some planks, and a stone gear. And you can see here I've got enough stuff to make, well, it looks like two of them. Okay, cool. Uh, let's go ahead and also make ourselves one more of uh, these guys, the crafting logistics pipe, just so I have two of those as well. And while I'm at it, let's snag, oh, I don't know, some stone transport pipes. Cool. Uh, I need a couple more bricks, apparently. Uh, let's get four of these. We'll just craft the bricks. Gotta love the fact that you can just request items and they come zipping up the line. Uh, isn't that just so cool? One of my favorite features. You don't have to go digging through chests and finding stuff. So I'm thinking down here along this back wall might be a nice place to set up our um, basic little crafting setup. What do you guys think? Sound like a plan? Yeah, that should be good. Uh, one thing I'd like to be able to do, though, also, while I'm kind of thinking about it a little bit, is, hmm, wouldn't it be cool to have, like, a requesting pipe down in the basement so I don't have to jump back and forth every time I want to get stuff? Yeah, that would kind of be neat. Yeah, for now, we'll, we'll leave like this, but we might throw another uh, request pipe down here so that I can get stuff. But for now, we're okay. So let's um, add a junction here. So I'm thinking... Hmm. Would this be a good spot for the junction to occur? I think so, yeah. There we go. So remember, every intersection needs to have a basic logistics pipe on it, okay? What I'm thinking here is then we can have um, a bunch of crafting logistics pipes here hooked up to the tables, okay? Um, and then we can kind of make this vertical. And eventually what we'll do is we'll have it going along the lines here, so all the way down this wall. Because we're basically going to need one of these blocks for every crafting recipe we're going to store, okay? The first one I'm going to teach it is how to make wooden planks. Because um, let's say I want to make stone gears okay 
that's probably the best thing. What I usually like to do when I'm building an automatic system like this is I know I'm going to need a lot of uh, materials, such as I'm going to need a lot of crafting logistics pipes, and I'm going to need a lot of these guys right here. Well, uh, let's go ahead and automate the creation of a logistics crafting table, okay? For this, we're going to need oak wood planks, we're going to need a chest, a crafting table, and a stone gear, okay? So let's teach it um, how to make wood planks first. It's real easy. You just put in the interface here, oak wood equals oak wood planks, okay? And once that's in place, we need to tell the crafting logistics pipe about it. Now, the good news about this is if you're hooked up to a logistics crafting table, you can simply click the import button, boom. And it's gonna automatically input uh, the inputs along the top and then the outputs down here pretty simple, right? So you can see for every one oak wood, we get four oak wooden planks. Really, really simple. If we hit the open button, we can open the block and see what's configured in there already. Cool. Okay. Uh, so that looks pretty good. I kind of like the looks of that all together, to be honest with you. So let's uh, leave that as is. And then this guy, we're going to set up and we're going to teach it how to make sticks. Okay. And it's just like that. There's wooden sticks, okay? And we're gonna do the same thing, import that recipe. Now, anytime I wanna make sticks, it's gonna first look in the system that we already have set up. So we have a bunch of chests up there. We're gonna go ahead and check to find out if we've already got the item we're looking for. Let's see. Can I make another lo request logistics pipes? I think I probably can. Iron and gold gears, huh? Yeah, I might wanna do that just because I wanna be able to be down here and demo this a little bit. So let's do that. Um, let's get ourselves, I could request it, but since I'm right here anyway, I might as well just do this iron and gold. We're actually gonna need two iron gears and our basic logistics pipe. And for now, I think we're all right to say, go with the tech one version or should we go with the tech two? I think tech one's good enough for now, right? There we go. Request logistics pipe. That should be good. Where should I hook this guy up at? Uh, let's see, where do I want him to be? Good question. How about something like this? Okay, so all I have to do is click on this thing and let's see how we can make sticks. Now, if I look up stick here, we'll see that we've already got 10 in the inventory. So let's request them and they should come out of the um, um, inventories above us. Cool. Now, however, if we look in here, we'll see that we don't have any sticks, but it's still listed as a potential item to be requested. Cool, that's pretty neat. Um, now down here, by the way, we can also change this from both to craft mode, and it'll only list the items that can be crafted within the system. In supply mode, it'll list everything that's in the system, but not list items that can be crafted. So the sticks are not listed in supply mode because I don't have any in the current supply. Finally, with both listed again, we're seeing both uh, the supply mode and the craftable sticks. Let's request, I don't know, 20 of them? So let's see what happens. So what we should see is maybe some wood shooting along somewhere around here. It should be coming all the way from our barrels. There it goes, cool. And that wood's gonna go ahead and jump straight into and get converted into wooden planks, which will then get converted into sticks and the sticks will come and shoot out here. Nice, right? So we just made a bunch of sticks. Awesome. Let me get myself a couple more uh, pieces of wood actually while I'm at it. I think I actually have some, so let's convert it directly. Okay, um, I'm gonna get myself one more crafting table. I know I had six already, that's cool. Oh, I already had a crafting station. All right, let's get some more logistics chest uh, pipes. And then we're also going to want the crafting table. All right, I need some more of those stone gears. There we go. Cool. Now we're talking. So it's really convenient to be able to set up this automation. Okay. Let's go ahead and teach it how to make gears. Real simple. Just got to do the sticks. And in fact, you'll need some in your inventory. And you know what? I think I might want to do the gears here just for my own personal reasons. Kind of like things to be organized. Something in this column here will be all the gears that are available. So we import this thing, we see it on my gears. So now I should be able to request a gear. One, please, request. And it should pull off what I need. There we go, getting sticks, getting gear, sending the gear to me. Ta-da, we got it, nice. And then I can use that gear here to teach it how to make um, the following. 
Uh, we want to do this. And then this. Cool. And again, don't forget to import the pattern. Nice. So now we can make stone gears. Request. And it's going to do everything it needs. It's going to get that cobblestone and zip it straight over there. Looking good. And then uh, we should see some wood coming down this pathway right here. Coming along. And doing everything it needs to do to get turned into sticks and gears and stone gear. And you can see the wood going up. It's probably going into some kind of chest where wood makes sense. It's either going into a chest that already has wood or the default route. Not bad, right? So why don't I spend a few minutes doing a little bit more with this, and I'm going to uh, teach the system just a few more crafting recipes. Now here's another cool trick if you want. You can uh, actually look up the recipe in NEI and shift click it in there, and then you can uh, automatically import into the table. So here we go, import. We can see that shift clicking in NEI does work for programming the um, recipe in here. Really pretty cool, right? So uh, let's go ahead and see what happens if I try and make myself some basic logistics pipes, which I think I just programmed pretty much everything I need. Uh, if we just request one, it should make all eight for us because that's how much a crafting recipe goes for. Cool. Item zipping around, making some stuff, and here come some basic logistics pipes. Cool. You'll note that one should get spit out here for me, and the other seven will be sent back um, to where they belong. Uh, so there we go, we've got seven. And I can go ahead and request those seven to come down now, and I'm looking pretty good. Look at that. Cool. Um, so we've got pretty good setup. Now the only thing I haven't programmed in there is how to make the golden redstone chipset. We're going to have to take a look at that one a little bit separately, because that's going to be a little bit more complex. I'm going to do a few more things here. Alright guys, so what I'd like to do, like I said earlier, is make an automated cow farm. And for this, I'm going to use a mod called Mine Factory Reloaded. Mine Factory Reloaded adds a bunch of automation machines, um, and it's a pretty cool mod. It adds conveyor belts for transporting items around. It adds its own style of rubber trees and saplings. It adds a bunch of different type of glass, as you can see there. And it adds a ton of machines. These are just some of them. There's more machines on the second page here, a bunch of different bricks. A really nifty thing called a programmable redneck controller, which we'll get into a little bit later on in the series once we get more into rednet and, and redstone control and even more in-depth automation and then even more machines so just a crazy large number of machines now there's two ways you can configure mine factory reloaded the default way or the non-default way the default way that mine uh, factory reloaded comes uh, the recipes in my opinion are a little bit cheap so um, I've had in my pack configured these guys to use thermal expansions um, recipes for some of their machines so most of the machines here are, I wouldn't say super expensive but a little bit more expensive than you might have seen uh, if you didn't have the config setting I have set if that bothers you you can go into the configs and change it back yourself uh, so basically what we're gonna need here for a couple of these machines most of them you can see we need machine frames which are pretty easy to make uh, and then we're also going to need uh, um, redstone reception coils. So I've got two guys here ready to get programmed with that machine frame like so and we'll do a redstone reception coil right here. Cool. And then of course the two crafting logistics pipes and import and import. So by the way I've also programmed this whole system here to be able to do um, the logistics crafting table and the logistics crafting pipes and I think I've got almost everything in there that we need. The only thing that's probably not taught to this system is uh, for logistics pipes is how to make redstone golden chipsets. Like I said, we'll get to that later. Uh, now, as you've done all this crazy work, you're probably getting to the point where you're saying, hey, Direwolf, how am I going to keep track of all this crazy stuff that we've just programmed? We've got already, within just a few minutes, a ton of stuff. Well, that's where we come into with the crafting sign creator. Okay, we're going to need a sign, a diamond chipset, and two golden chipsets. And you're probably saying to yourself, boy, that sounds expensive. Eh, don't worry. It's pretty worth it. Uh, let's first get ourselves a sign, request that guy, and then a uh, redstone chipset. Uh, good, I've got two of those. Perfect. There's my sign, and there's the redstone chipsets, and we've got the crafting logistics sign creator doohickey. Uh, just come over here and right-click on one of these guys, and ta-da! We get to see what each of these things makes. How cool is that, huh? Not bad at all. So just by right clicking on the sign, it gives you number one, a nice little picture of the item being made, the ID number of the item being made, and the name of it. How cool is that? Very cool. Yeah, I like it. Um, and I think 
there's probably a way to recharge this, or maybe it just has a certain number of uses. I'm not entirely positive, to be honest with you. But uh, yeah, that's what we got here. So not a bad little way to uh, label all your different recipes and all that cool stuff. All right, so now that I've automated making machine frames and redstone reception coils, as well as making the uh, logistics crafting table and the crafting logistics pipes, let's move on. So one of the things these mine factory reloaded things require is plastic sheets, which are made from raw plastic. Raw plastic is pretty much made from either uh, rubber bars, which come from mine factory reloaded, or rubber itself from industrial craft 2. Both of them will work. Luckily, I happen to be near a swamp biome, which is where you can often find quite a large number of rubber trees. So you can see here I'm kind of clearing away the uh, terrain here, just trying to uh, dig past these rubber trees. Now rubber trees are pretty easy to spot, usually because you'll see this little um, pillar of two leaves sitting on top of the tree. So these little two leaves right on top in the center here are a dead giveaway to some rubber trees. Um, and of course, once you've seen uh, enough of these things, you'll you'll know that you've got them. So what I'm going to do is um, start a little bit with some industrial craft to get um, processing of rubber trees working. So um, rubber trees are actually pretty easy to deal with. I'm going to go ahead and show you right now. Simply create a crafting pattern like that in your crafting table, and you'll be able to get yourself a tree tap okay the tree tap here go ahead and find on the rubber tree sapling a little rubber spot it's pretty easy to find once you see one there's one it's a nice little orange thing when you right click on it you'll harvest some rubber cool you get anywhere from one to three so sometimes you get more sometimes less no big deal um, now in fact I just got a little bit unlucky because uh, I got a bunch of rubber trees here with very few rubber slots on them more often you'll find uh, a good number of rubber slots it's uh, not as rare as it appears from that appearance right there cool there's a little bit more so I'm probably gonna want to uh, grow a couple rubber trees close to my base the good news about these rubber slots is that they regrow uh, provided that you don't over tap them so you don't want to because you can um, spam the clicking of the um, thing right there, the wood that we just showed you. Um, let's see, I'll see if I can do it. There we go. So see how I hit it again? If you do that too much, uh, the rubber tree probably won't regrow its little resin spot. So don't do that. Some people have recommended it. I recommend against it uh, because oh, this is a good tree. It had three rubber slots on it. Nice. Um, you don't want to do that because like I said, they won't regrow. If you, uh, you know, only tap it once, wait a little bit, come back, It'll probably have regrown its rubber spot, and you can go ahead and uh, harvest some more. Cool. So I'm just uh, sneaking around inside this uh, swamp biome here. I see one more rubber tree that's not too far away. Then I'm going to head back to my base and uh, plant a couple of these guys and get them to grow. There we go. Got some rubber. That looks good to me. And don't worry, we will definitely be automating this soon. Meet you guys back at my base, which is somewhere off in this direction. So what can we do with this resin? Well, the most basic thing to do with resin is smelt it. That's not the most efficient, unfortunately. Um, basically, resin can be used in two ways. We can smelt it, we get one rubber per sticky resin, or we can build uh, an extractor machine, which gives us three rubber per one sticky resin. For now, as you can see, I am smelting it simply because um, I don't want to build a whole IC2 infrastructure just to get myself a couple pieces of rubber at the moment. It is the most efficient way to do it, though. So uh, probably in a very nearby future episode, episode probably before episode 20 but I'm not sure I'll uh, start up with some industrial craft 2 and build a little bit of infrastructure for some IC2 machines and then we'll be able to get those um, uh, sticky resin and rubber in a much better quantities and much better shape as a matter of fact let's see do I have any in IC2 stuff or did this land in here it did okay so I should probably tell this guy you know what I want IC2 to go into this chest mod based item sink I see two, add, cool, cool, and good to go. Good, now all my industrial craft stuff will go into this chest. Uh, I'm gonna go plant a couple of these rubber tree saplings somewhere outside. I'm not entirely sure where I want these to be. I guess I could plant them like way back here. I don't want them to be too close to my rubber tree farm, but I don't want them to be too far away either. How about something like this? That's a small little farm. You know what? I've got three more saplings. Let's just do it. Okay, there we go. So now that I've got my rubber, um, to make the uh, raw plastic that we need for um, Mine Factory Reloaded, we need to smelt the rubber. So, and it goes into the furnace. And that will be turned directly into, um, as you'll see here, raw plastic. Cool. 
Uh, once that's cooked up, we can start making our first machines. Now I'm gonna need some carrots. Do I have any carrots? That is a really good question. I don't know that I've found carrots yet in this world. And I would really like to build this machine. I do have a golden apple, that's not a problem. Carrots though, hmm. All right, let me go see what I can do about that. So guys, it's a good thing that I remembered. I did a little exploring a while back and far south and slightly west of my base, I found a village. And look what we've got here. Carrots, awesome. I don't wanna take these people and all their carrots, you know? I wanna kinda of save a few for the villagers, but I don't mind uh, planting a little bit back and just taking the extras with me. Seems like a pretty good plan. Uh, what else do I got here? Any other goodies in this village? Should check to see if there's any chests around. It's one of those annoying, like, in the middle of the ocean villages, so sometimes it can be a nuisance. Let's see. I'll take these uh, carrots and these. Let me see if there's any chests in here that have anything good, too, because I really haven't explored this village. I kind of saw it on the map, but never came all the way down, so... And uh, a couple of the mods add some villager um, additions to them. So it's not too bad of an idea to check out what might be added here. Mm, nothing too good in here. Yep, this is a Mistcraft villager house, but no uh, chests. Sometimes there usually is actually, so I'm surprised, but eh. Anything here? Nope, nothing good. Oh, it looks like it's getting dark out. Oh, there's a blacksmith. There's usually villager loot and stuff in there, isn't there? Let's see. Really? Nothing? Wow. Just terrible old luck today, huh? Nope, nothing. Bookshelves. Eh. Might as well chop them down. Remember, this axe will chop in like a 3x3 three three square, anything that's wood-based, so nice easy way to chop down bookshelves. All right, let me see if I can't find anything else in this village, and then I'll meet you back at my base. All right, so let's make it. Uh, let's just get ourselves one set of the uh, plastic sheets, and then we should be in good shape to get ourselves a breeder. This is the first thing we're going to want to make. You can see I've already expanded my little farm here just enough to get it working properly. Um, what I'd like to do is be able to feed these animals. So basically what we're going to have here is the system. Hey, creepers, how's it going? Gotcha. Uh, basically what we'll have is a system where we're going to automatically feed the animals, then we're going to um, separate the um, children that are fed and bred from the adults so that, uh, you know, we'll have them in like a separate pen over here. And then once they grow up into full grown adults, then we will um, take care of them in a nice way to put it to get ourselves a bit of leather and, um, you know, a couple other things. So that's kind of the plan. We're going to see how it uh, branches out from there. Let's start off by figuring out where I want to put this breeder. I'm thinking I might want to rearrange this pen just a little bit. Let me think about it. All right, guys, as you can see here, I uh, separated this out even further. I'm going to see if this works. This should function, but we'll kind of see how it goes. Um, so what I've got here is uh, sheep on one side, cows on another. I might even split this down the middle here like so and break this thing because I have these awesome boots. I don't really need a gate fence anymore. Cool. This looks pretty good. All right, so let's put this thing to work. Uh, what I'm thinking is... We'll probably want to have, hmm, I might want to split this a little bit differently. Let me do that. All right, step one, now that I've uh, made this a little bit more even, is the breeder. Uh, so let's go ahead and place down our breeder here, like so. And you'll see that uh, it's kind of facing out uh, towards all the cows. That's perfect. That's exactly what we want to see happen. Uh, to get this thing to work, we're going to need a bit of wheat, or pretty much anything else that a cow will eat. There we go. I should really, you know, make a little bit of a better wheat farm, but for now this will kind of function. Let's see, bear with me a moment. There we go, slightly better. Certainly less derpy. So we'll automate wheat at some point in the near future, but for now, we'll probably just manually move it over there. 
But once we do automate it, then we'll really be in good shape. All right, so uh, wheat goes in here, but we also need to give it some power. And for that, we're going to need some redstone energy. Um, just temporarily, because I don't feel like running cable over there, I'm just going to steal this hardened energy cell. That's okay, we don't necessarily need it. And just to demonstrate functionality, I'm going to place it down right here. Cool. And make sure that the left side of the block is set to output power. And we should see some energy going in there. And what's going to happen is <clears throat> this machine has a bit of an idle cooldown. And at the end of that cooldown, we'll see that it'll um, go ahead and do some work, as in it's going to um, feed the cows. Okay. So let's see what happens here. Cool. So it looks like it fed them, and we got a baby cow out of it. Perfect. So that is stage one. Oh, it looks like it fed the uh, sheep too. Not bad. Cool. I wasn't sure if it would reach the sheep over there or not, but it looks like it is, so that's okay. I'll take it. Oh, hey, there's a chicken over here still. Let's move him. Golden lasso is perfect for that kind of thing. All right, so the breeder is doing his job. Awesome. Next up, we're going to need this lovely machine, the Chronotyper. What he can do is um, detect the age of an animal. So let's get it set up over here. Okay, um, so this guy is going to detect how old the animals are. And right now, I need to uh, put some fence posts on here to block these animals from jumping over it. Get back in your pen, you guys. That's better. Much better. Okay, there we go. I might even section this off. We'll see. For now, it's good. Um, let's place the um, redstone energy cell underneath just to demonstrate. Actually, um, let's make sure this is on, and boom. Notice how the baby cow came straight over. That's because it's set to transfer babies. So anything that's, um, you know, a young cow is going to get transferred directly over uh, onto this side of the fence. Cool, right? The one thing to note about these machines is they affect a 5x5 five five area in front of them. So I'm guessing that means, um, you know, probably from here to about here. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, probably up to about this block here. So uh, let's go ahead and give him power again. And again, we will definitely be hooking up some power conduits here in the near future. But for now, this is just like a temporary setup kind of deal. I see you hiding down there. There we go. Uh, let's just make sure that this works. So he's got energy. Um, we'll have to wait a few minutes for these cows to be able to breed again, but we should wind up with some more um, babies setting up. I'll be back in a minute after sleeping through the night. Finally, I'm making uh, an Invar sword here, which is going to be used to make the grinder. All right, what am I missing? Should have most of what I need here. You know what it might be is sometimes it looks like NEI doesn't like shift clicking in non-stackable items like that sword. But now we've got the grinder, okay? This guy's also going to affect a 5x5 five five area. Oh look, we've got more um, baby cows here. Perfect. That's what I wanted to see. Uh, now I wouldn't mind getting one of those grown up so that I could have a total of four cows in the breeding pen over here, but eh, we're not too worried about it. So for now, um, I want to make sure to affect the 5x5 five five area correctly, so I'm going to set this guy up right here. Okay, now uh, we want to make sure that it faces the correct direction, so I'm going to face it like that. Okay, um, now we're probably also going to want to clear out this area. Let's see, where's my shovel? I don't have just a regular old shovel anywhere. Should have one somewhere. Alright, I guess not. Unless I just missed it. Okay. There we go. So what we want to do is face it this way, and it should affect uh, one, two, three. It should affect all these blocks here. One, two, three, four, five out to here. So it should get all these guys. All right, and uh, what it's going to do is it's going to serve actually two very important purposes. Uh, number one, it's going to uh, kill the animals and collect um, their drops. So let's see here. Do I have any um, redstone energy conduits? 
Oh, there we go. I got five of them. Cool. I'll take them. So, let's give this guy a minute to grow up. Alright guys, a bit of time has passed. Two of the cows have grown, so I'm going to pick one up and drop them right in here. Cool. So now we've got um, four cows hanging out inside this pen over here, ready to be bred. Cool. We just need more wheat for that to happen. Uh, one of these guys has grown up enough, so let's get some energy over here. Again, temporary energy cabling. Don't mind me. Boom. Hooray! Took care of the cow. Nice. And it also dropped for us a bit of raw beef and leather. Now, obviously, we don't want items falling on the ground, so we have two options here. We can either put them in a chest or pipe them directly into some kind of pipes, such as, um, you know, the, the item ducts from Thermal Expansion, which we'll probably set up here in just a bit. Uh, but for now, this will work. So let's go ahead and break all this, because I don't want all these to be here. This was more like kind of a proof of concept build, but we've got the basics set up. Number one, we feed the cows. They produce offspring, which get stumped into this pen. Now, you'll also have noticed that the grinder won't kill um, the babies. It waits for them to grow up fully, which is pretty good. So we just have to wait for them to grow, and then this thing takes care of it and gets us a bunch of leather and beef. Nice. I'm pretty happy for that. There's one other thing I could use some more of, and that's wool. I wonder what I could do for wool. Let's see. So for this job, we're going to want the rancher. Let's see how he works. Um, he's going to act in pretty much the same way. We're going to face him towards a group of animals, perhaps these guys right here. Let's do it like this. There we go. That should cover the area, the 5x5 five five area that I want to. And uh, simply give him some power like this. Ta-da! And he'll automatically shear the sheep for me. Nice. Thanks, buddy. I much appreciate it. So that machine is going to be very useful for collecting a good amount of sheep. Uh, wool. So uh, we've got a pretty basic setup here. We're uh, feeding stuff. In fact, if I have any more, I think I can feed them this stuff, can't I? And these machines, as you probably saw on the interface, all have a bit of an internal power buffer. So even though I don't have the uh, energy hooked up to all of them just yet, that's okay. Um, they should run just for this demonstration. The thing is, I didn't want to breed any more sheep, so that's why I, um, you know, did what I did there. Let's get this thing taken off. And get the barley in here. Once the idle timer ticks down, we should start using some of it, I assume. Maybe we have to wait for them to be able to breed again. It's probably been a while. So we'll see. If the barley doesn't work, I'll always throw wheat in there. It'll be fine. It might require wheat because it's a... Uh, the way the block works. I'm not really sure. So we've got a pretty basic setup. Um, we're going to have to come back in just a moment to finish it up. Well, guys, I am sorry to say it, but it does look like we've hit the wrapping up point for this episode. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave everything as it is for now. We're going to come back next episode. Uh, let me actually show you guys another cool trick that we can do just to uh, make sure we don't have any issues between this episode and next. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put a lever on this thing, and that should stick it in idle mode. Okay, redstone signal applied to these blocks. Prevent them from doing any work. Cool. So uh, we'll go ahead and apply this here. It'll stay idle, as well as uh, this guy stays idle. Cool. Uh, we'll let the chronotyper keep running. I don't think that'll be a problem. A little bit low on energy, and uh, we shouldn't have any more breeding occurring because we've disabled this block. Uh, we'll test uh, a little bit, and I'll let you guys know next episode whether or not barley's going to work. But like I said, for now, we do got to wrap up. So this is Direwolf20 signing off. Hope you've enjoyed the episode. Uh, we'll be back next time to automate and store all these uh, items. So we'll uh, come up with a good way to um, you know, store the wool and the leather and the um, beef that we're getting from this. Cool. All right, guys. Take it easy.